Welcome to the November 2021 edition of Corps Connection, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers vlog that looks at what your U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is working on around the globe. I'm your host, Patrick Bloodgood, and this is Corps Connection. We start this month's episode looking back at the recently completed Blue Roof mission, where the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, working with FEMA and the state of Louisiana, provided temporary roofing for more than 30,000 Louisiana residents in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. Patrick Mose from the St. Paul District takes us to southern Louisiana, where the mission team faced a unique challenge, working on houses that have no roads accessing them. Stetson Smith. I'm with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Vicksburg District and I'm a civil engineer. Today we're down here in South Louisiana at a very unique case uh, for our Hurricane Ida recovery efforts. Uh, the houses that we're dealing with today are only accessible by boat so uh, that's brought a few challenges for us. So these houses are, are, are very difficult to reach because they're on a the back bayou in southern Louisiana so we had to send out contractors on boats uh, to, to place these blue roofs on their roof. This is the first case that I've seen where we've actually had to, to travel out by boat. I know that there have been more, but as far as uh, me physically doing one, this, this is the first case of anything like this that I've seen. So I've really been able to, to put myself in these homeowner's shoes. My parents were affected during Hurricane Katrina and, and we had a lot of our belongings that, that got destroyed from the, the storm. So you really want to come out and help these homeowners out and by any means possible just to make sure that their belongings are safe and they have a safe place to live. It's a really unique situation and uh, it, we've really gone above and beyond to help out all these homeowners to the best of our ability. And I, I believe we've done the best job that we can. Last month's closeout of the Blue Roof mission marked the fastest response effort from start to finish in the history of the program. Colonel Zachary Miller, the response team commander, highlights how this feat was successfully accomplished. Hi, this is Colonel Zach Miller, commander of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Hurricane Ida Recovery Mission. I'm here in Eastern Orleans Parish on the very last day of blue roof installation at one of the last homes to get a blue roof. All told, we've covered nearly 34,000 roofs and we've done it in just over 50 days, which is far and away the fastest this mission's ever been accomplished. We wouldn't have been able to do this without the help of a whole host of partners, including FEMA, the state leadership, parish leadership, local leadership, and of course our incredible contractors and our Corps of Engineer employees. We know that the state has a long way to go for full recovery from this hurricane, but we hope that the Blue Roof mission has brought just a little bit of relief to the many people from the state that are hurting, and we're gonna be here till the end till you fully recover from this hurricane. USACE continues to assist Louisiana, which still has a long recovery in the wake of Hurricane Ida. From the lower Mississippi River to points further north, USACE has been working to keep the meandering river in a steadier state for navigation. Crews use revetment matting to help keep the river within its current channel. This methodology and technology are around 80 years old and USACE is working on a robotic way to keep the river in place. Vicksburg District Commander Colonel Robert Hilliard talks about this new system and what it means for efficiency and safety. Hey, so today we're in Pittsburgh at the National Robotics Engineering Center. And this is where they're designing the robotics for the new Armor One. You know, it's gonna help us in our revetment mission on the Mississippi River. You know, we, one of our most important missions is revetment on the Mississippi River. And that is armoring the river so that it remains in place, which is crucial for navigation. And take that to the strategic level, that is incredibly important strategically for our nation to compete in the world, to get goods and services up and down the Mississippi River. And the armoring or the revetment that we do each season is what keeps that system going year after year after year. The system that we have right now, the current Armor One, is really 1940s technology that we've modified over the years. But it takes a lot of manual labor 
and maintenance to keep it going. You know, with the new Armor One system that they're building and helping design here at NREC at Carnegie Mellon here in Pittsburgh, it's really going to enhance not only the efficiency, but the safety of that system. So we're gonna be able to do our mission faster and more efficiently, but at the same time, we're gonna be able to keep our employees safe out on the river. And our employees are our number one priority. So what they do on a day-to-day -day basis is so dangerous. And you cannot imagine or fathom all of this operation going on in the environment where they're working, out on the river. So it behooves us to do everything we can to ensure that they have the safest equipment they can. Because I view my job as one is where I send them back to their families just like they send them to us. When completed, Armor One will include six independent robotic cranes, which will pick up the large concrete squares from a supply barge and place them on the mat deck of Armor One's manufacturing barge, where they will be assembled and placed in the river. The system is scheduled to be deployed and begin operations in 2023. As the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers works to keep navigation channels open and continues to go deeper to accommodate larger container ships making port calls on our nation's coastal ports, USACE often encounters relics from the past. One such discovery is occurring in the Savannah River, where archaeologists are diving down to locate and identify cannons and other items along the channel floor. The main thing we're trying to do at this phase of target relocation is we're going back to the cannons we found previously and we want to make sure we've got really tight coordinates on them. Dive Vessel Parker will be conducting dive operations north of Fort Jackson in the Savannah River Channel. We have about five people working the entire time, so teamwork is absolutely vital when we're doing this. Everybody on this boat is a vital part of the team. Once I hit bottom, uh, I let Jeff know, diver on bottom, and he immediately tells me which direction I need to move. It's generally away from the, the vessel. Okay, so we're going to back out 15 feet on your rig. Back out 15 feet. Back out 15! I mean, you're basically like an astronaut. <laughs> uh, you have your hard hat on uh, with comms. It's a lot of just running around the seafloor until you physically encounter something. Uh, on the bottom to identify. Hey Jim, can you get us the measurement from the muzzle to that possible trunnion? We were able to confirm uh, two additional cannon that we knew about before. We found what we believe to be another cannon, a very small cannon. We found what may be the muzzle of another cannon we found a fragment of an anchor, and uh, very interestingly, which we retrieved and brought back to the surface, we found a uh, bar shot, which would be a type of uh, munition fired out of a cannon and designed mainly to destroy rigging. Looks to be a piece of bar shot. And say so this is, we found one uh, previous dive, previous time we were here. But that is uh, pretty cool and really cool that we've got two different kinds. The archaeology work is a part of the Savannah Harbor Expansion Project, which is deepening the shipping channel from a depth of 42 feet to 47 feet. Our final story for this episode takes us to Pittsburgh District, where they are working with the state of Pennsylvania to restore a fishery in Woodcock Creek Lake through a restocking. Pittsburgh District's Michelle Soiret brings us that story. The reason for today's stocking was we have an opportunity to stock some larger size, advanced size fish. We would expect them to be anywhere from 12 inches by next year and 15 inches by the year after that. This winter we had an incidental drawdown of the lake and we did push certain species, mostly muskie and walleye, through the dam down into the outflow. What I would say to reassure people about this fishery is that the numbers are favorable. Um, we weren't sure at first. We knew we lost a few fish, but again, the Fish Commission's preliminary netting in the springtime was more favorable than we anticipated. And then again, just last week, they did some electroshocking, which is kind of the, the platinum level of 
fish surveying, if you will. We're really optimistic that in the next two to three years, we'll be a world-class fishery again. The optimism is high because I've seen what the potential of the lake has before the drawdown event occurred. It definitely has the habitat conditions, it definitely has the water quality, it definitely has the uh, food sources and fertility of the lake to really see this progress rather quickly. We have a lot of lakes in the commission that have been drained and reconstructed and the reason for that is because of dam safety. When we wrote restocking plans for those, we had to start from scratch. There wasn't any fish in there. Woodcock is different. We have a population already in here, so it's building upon what we have and restoring what we lost. So that's an important point to remember. That's why we can say that this is going to recover a lot quicker than say a new impoundment where we have to start from scratch. And that's important. Without partnerships across the board, um, we can't do anywhere near what we're doing and what we have been doing currently. And the, the fishery is phenomenal from muskie to walleye to crappie. Um, for a very long time, it was a hidden gem for smallmouth bass. And uh, a large part of that is due to the partnership we have with the Fish and Boat Commission. Our office has worked with the Corps historically for years and years and years. And we all work as a team. We're all pieces of the puzzle, uh, basically, to help better manage the lake, whether that be the water quality side, whether it be the restocking side, whether that be the assessment of the fisheries. It's, fish population itself. We're all an integral team and work together in all different facets of managing the lake. I come here to fish all the time. I'm retired now and uh, I spend most of my time on this lake. It's special when they went to the trouble and the effort to fix the problem and they're doing a fantastic job. The guys I fish with here on this lake all the time, we all appreciate what they're doing. What I've seen today, uh, we're happy. So the thing I appreciate most about Woodcock Creek Lake is the is the community aspect of it. I'm being able to see the immediate response of the people that we do stuff for. A lot of small communities that can come here in an evening, they can stop and get a sandwich and go kayaking, go fishing. So I think that's the big draw, the big community draw here is because we're just so close to everybody. That wraps up this episode of Core Connection. We will see you next month where in honor of Veterans Day happening yesterday, we will have coverage on some of the veterans who continue to serve our nation as civilian employees, as well as other stories highlighting the work we do on behalf of our nation. Until then, I'm Patrick Bloodgood, and this has been Core Connection.